Hello guys and welcome in this new video on the game engine series. Now in the previous video we talked about this um, application right here on the screen. This is a map editor. This program is used to create maps. So we talked about how to install it and how to use it to draw some map that could be uh, in return used in our program. Now we did this before we create our map puzzle because we needed a map before creating a puzzle for that map. And yeah, um, yeah, we we actually uh, show out how to use this application, and uh, I think it's important for you to go and check it out if you haven't. And uh, if you guys have any question or concern about this, you can still write in the comment section below. Now, in this video, we're gonna be talking about map puzzle. We're gonna be creating our map puzzle class. But before we get started, I just wanna say thank you to my first Patreon. Uh, his name is a little bit harsh to pronounce. I think it's Bedeev. Well, I hope I'm doing it well. But thank you, and uh, it really means the world for me what you did. And um, yeah, I also want to encourage you guys who uh, who can also support me on Patreon to go out and yeah and do it. Now, let's get started. <music> first thing we need to do before um, we create our map puzzle is to create our class so that's that's definitely important so we create our class we call it map puzzle so we make sure we put it in the right folder in the map folder so I go to my source and map and I say create yes yes now there is one thing uh, pretty much important and uh, if we don't have that component we can't do anything in this video so I've been showing you this map file right here and you can see this is XML file so I hope you guys know what that is XML file is like a markup file where you can actually have some information and pass them into your program and use them so we need like a XML puzzle so like um, a library that can give us access to XML to be able to pass XML we don't want to create one our own it will be you know too huge and that's not a part of this you know of this video series we're not talking about uh, creating XML puzzle we're talking about creating a game engine and if you already have something created that we can use so why not so we actually have um, a tiny library called tiny XML which is the one we're gonna be using so I'll provide the link in the description below so that you guys can download it and include it into your project and I'm also gonna show you how you can include it into your project so it actually looks like this so if you download it you should have things you should have these files but if you have problem or maybe if you download anything that doesn't make sense you can still download from the code um, because in the code in the description below I'll provide also this with the project so you guys can simply go out and use it so we also we also want to see how to um, include it in our project so now in order for us to do that I want you to open your project folder so go out to the source and we have this vendor folder so you have to create a new vendor folder so I did I create it so just somehow create a new folder and call it vendor so vendor is actually for all kind of external library that we're gonna be using in the future we're going to be including I am GUI in this project and use OpenGL stuff to have like uh, you know I don't want to get too deep on that right now but you create this folder and in there you just copy and paste your tiny XML so the name could be different it doesn't matter that's not a, that's because I want it to be like that so we have the tiny XML edit now we need to tell CodeBlock where to find that file where we comp when we compile the project because right now you can see we don't have that vendor right here now in order for us to do that we want to click on the project click right and we'll say add file recursively so we go to that and we go to the source and we go to vendor tiny xml and we push ok yes see we have our vendor folder with the tiny XML inside 
So that's what we actually have right here. So um, there is also an important constant that we need to define in the beginning of, uh, of, of our tiny XML because if you don't do it, you probably don't, you're probably going to face some problem. I think you have to write this line right here. Yeah. So if define if it's not defined, then define this. So this is important. Write this in the tiny string dot h. Let me check in the tiny header. Maybe make sure I have the right one. It's this one right here. So let, let, let the other one. I think that's normal. So go out and make sure in the tiny xml dot h you define this tiny xml use stl. So that's important. Make sure you have that because if you don't, uh, you will have a lot of problem. But in the version I put in the source code, it actually it's already done, so you don't have to change anything. So don't touch that. But if you download from the link I provided to the website, you can make sure that you put this. It's important. So we have that edit right here. But now we haven't told Codeblock where to find these files because now we have it in the project, but the compiler will not link to this file. So we have to go to the linker right here. There, there are two ways of doing this. We can do it. We can do it. Uh, the first way is to do it uh, on this project. The other one is to do it globally so that all kind of project that we create will link to that. No, I kind of want to do it globally. No, no, no. I want to do it on the project. Yeah. Let's go back to our project right here and say build option. Do it on the project. It's better like that. So, and we simply say add. So you go to the build option. So you say, same, sorry, say build option and you go to the search directory section. So this is where we actually put all folder that the compiler should check and take all our headers file and CPP file. You can see we have all these folders right here. So you say add and you have to push us on this browse button right here and go and check and you know select your tiny XML folder. Make sure you put it yes to the relative because we want it to be like others. And yeah, we have our folder now. We simply include our tiny XML and use it without any problem. So we didn't want to because if I do, for example, here tiny, you see it actually appears. So that's why I wanted to select this folder. If you select vendor, then you will have to put vendor first. We say vendor and then tiny XML, but I didn't want to do that. So that's why I went and select the whole component stuff. So um, now the next step for us to get started using this is to create our map puzzle class. So um, I have it right here, but I'm going to create it again so that you guys don't have any kind of issue because I did something before you. So let me go out and remove that. Uh, where is my folder map? I removed the map parser. So we want to create that class called map parser. So we say map parser. So make sure to select the right folder, which is map. Make sure you have a CPP and a header file and just push create. So we have our two classes added in here. So I want to close some of these because we have that here. You can leave that one like this. Okay. Now before we get started writing any kind of line of code, we need to include some important component. So we include a map. We're going to be creating like a map which is going to be containing all our maps. So when we create many maps, we can pass them and somehow put them in this uh, in this map right here, and we can use this throughout um, the program. So include. We also need to include string. It's important for us. And since we're gonna be passing a map, we need to include our map that we created. So game map. And since the game map has layers, we need to include tile layers to include since tile layer and inherit from layer so we don't have to include layer so tile layer is the same thing as including layer yeah somehow like that and we finally want to include our tiny xml 
So we need to define, I want to remove this protected in this destructor right now. The first thing we want to do is to make sure this class is a singleton class because we don't want to uh, mess up, you know, having two parser at the same time clashing or something like that. We want to make sure this is a singleton class. So you can simply create your static member down here. I think we've already done that, so you guys already know. So I say static map parser and we simply say instance. So this instance right here is what we're using up there to get the current instance. We, are, we always have only one instance of this class. Make sure the constructor is private. We don't want to, you know, messed up with someone trying to create a new instance of this and we have problem. And um, yeah, we also need to define some important a method like we have load this function will be used to load the map and it returns true if everything is correct or false in the other sense so we have a clean function which is uh, not going to be used right now but it's important to make sure that we clean it later because we're going to be passing stuff and yeah. so we have this function right here to get the map so we have six game map to get maps so um but first of all we need to create our uh, map for all those game maps that we're gonna be having throughout the program so we simply say std map we say std string so this is the id of the map and here we have the map itself and we're going to be calling it maps or you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter so we have this we need to define some private method which should never be used outside of this class right here that's why you want to make it right here so the first method is the pass bool pass pass and takes two components the, the id of the map to pass so when we pass a map we want to add it to this maps list so we can say map let's change this name and say map tick so we can make it like that so when we pass a new map we want to add it to this guy that's why we need an id for that map but we also need like the file the file name that we have to pass so std std string and we say south that's the first function we also need two important functions right here the first one is to pass the tile set because the map has layers and tile set. We also want to pass those tile set. If you remember in the file right here, we have this tile set right here. We also want to pass this and we also want to create another function to pass layer. And the pass function will simply call the pass layer and the pass tile set and put them in the list. That's the idea behind that. So that's why it's important. So pass tile set. Now this is where we start using tiny XML. We say ti. So don't don't worry uh, about this. It's gonna be uh, it's quite simple to use tiny XML. We don't have to we don't have to spend time trying to explain words. You will it's straightforward actually. XML tile tile set. So now we pass the tile set component. This is just a name, so it doesn't matter. You can see right here we have this tile set. It's a XML component and we'll simply select this and pass that to the function and the and to that method and it will pass those information up here like the tile width, the tile height, the tile count, the columns. So that's the idea of that. And we also have the other function called pass layer. So 
let's say this is for oh, this function actually pass tile layers we'll create another one for image layers later on now we only want to do this for this so it need to take some important component the first one is the is the uh, xml element that we want to pass from so i'm going to call this layer xml layer The next one is going to be so we're going to be starting with our load function even though we haven't you know implemented those function down here because this function is pretty straightforward we don't need to think too much about that so it's just like we call the pass function we pass the id of, of, of a map to pass and we pass the file name as you can see right here i think we created that folder the name of the i need to close something right here i have too much open so I go out here, go back a little bit, check the assets folder, maps, okay, this maps. So the name is not map1, but map.tmx. So we just pass this. If it didn't, you know, if it didn't uh, make it successfully, we just return false and if not, we return true. Actually, we can actually, we can actually do it like this. Uh, Sometimes we messed up doing things simply we can simply say return return because this guy will return either true or false we simply return the value of that if that was true then perfect and this this function will actually load all maps that we want to load so we can load many maps but for now since we only have one we want to you know do it like this so the id of that map is going to be level one and it will be added through the pass function in the map list in the map dictionary that we created before this guy here so now we want to write the code for the um pass tile set that's the first one we're going to be starting with and yeah the first thing we need to do in order for us to pass the tile set we need to create the tile set that will get the value from the XML. We call it tile set. So we create the object. Now in XM in this tiny XML, if you want to access the attribute of an XML element, you can simply use the attribute function. So let me show you for example. We simply say we take this element right here, we say XML tile set. We simply say attribute. You see now just give the name of the attribute I think name so if I show you the map right here so if you open your map you will be able to see this see we are on tile set this is a tile set for example right here we have the name so the name is right objects so that's what we're doing right here and what we actually want to do is we'll say oh there's some stuff so what we're actually gonna do is say tile set dot name equal to this. Now we get the value. Now this is for strings. So this is when you want to pass a string. But for numbers, it's a little bit different. So but we still use the same function but uh, with a different parameter. So tile set, we say attribute, and here we give the name of the attribute we want to get. So for example first first id first gid i think it's gid something like that yeah so it's first gid yeah. first grid id actually and that's what we want to get right here and now if you want to write this to the to this guy to the, the first id of this guy we simply do it like this we pass a reference so the tile set first ID. Why is it coming with first? I need to make sure I change that name ID. The layer right here. We have first, it should be first ID. Make sure we put that. So we go back to our puzzle. So we've got that. This is how you can get a numbers. So you give the attribute and you give the reference to the variable in which 
the value of this attribute is going to be written. That's the ID. So we also need to do the same thing for high count columns and stuff. So I can paste some of these here. So the tile count, we have tile count, and the last ID is equal to the tile set first ID plus tile count because the first ID is one. And if you want to have the last, we make this and we remove one. So actually, and we, we're doing this because we're going to be having uh, more than one uh, tile set. We could have simply say, okay, it's equal to tile count minus one, but since we have a lot of tile set, we have more than one. You can see right here the ID is the ID of the first one start by one the second one start by this and we have to make sure that we always get the right first ID or some images or tile will missed when you pass the map that's why we use this so we also have the column this is call count call count same thing for the what, what have I done? Yeah. yeah, call count. Yeah, call count. And uh, down here we have the tail width. So this is row count. So row count. So I changed the name. Now the tile width, we just copy it and set it to the value right here as we did for the other guy. And now um, we also need to get the source. So the image source, the image that we're actually going to be um, getting. So if you see right here, the image is inside. It's another child element to that tile set. That's why we need to access any image. You see right here, we create an image a component or element, XML image element and we get the tile source so we get the source right here which is written inside our, our source tile and we return the tile set we'll later look at, look, use that to paste our uh, map and our layer down yeah. yeah it's a little bit annoying and um, I think this video is getting a little bit longer and we need to stop it right now we're gonna be moving forward in the next video but if you guys have question or concern, just write me in the comment section below. Uh, you can download the source code in the description if you have any problem. I'll make sure it it works. So yeah, think about to support me on Patreon and uh, out.